from the inner sanctums of Wrightington Hospital, playing the best of yesterday and today. Yeah. Yesterday and today. Playing your music 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day. Across the wards of Wrightington and Wigan Hospitals. of yesterday and today and today your very own hospital radio playing your music 24 hours a day this is Wrightington hospital radio Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Lanky Beat Show. As usual, we have a nice star lineup for you. And uh, while we're putting the English Red Rose County of Lancashire on the world's rock and roll map, we have a German guest with us tonight. This is Manfred Kuhlmann and friend Harry Prithuch, who lives just up the road in Standish from where we are now in the studio. We'll look forward to meeting them later and uh, listen to their fascinating accounts of their lives so far. Here we go. First in, this one is Chains. chains. My baby's got me locked up in chains And they ain't the kind That you can see Whoa, oh, these chains of love Got a hold on me, yeah A chains my baby's got me locked up in chains And they ain't the kind That you can see And the Rebels, that was a great version of the original track. I first heard a little band from Liverpool play in around about 1963. Can you guess who it was, Diane? Um, a shot to the dark, not was it the Beatles? It was indeed. Anyway, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Oh, how are you? Good to see All you. All these holidays you keep having. I know, I, I, was, I, I took a four day last week and um, we went up to t lakes as they say from round here and had a pleasant four days it rained a bit we did a bit of this did that, but it was a pleasant little break and it kind of breaks you in for holidays for the rest of the year when you're talking about uh, 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 i'm a new newborn caravaner 
I mean, I mean um, uh, an old age traveller. <laughs> an old age traveller. Thank you very much, Diane. <laughs> I shall remember that. Okay, a new that. age traveller. Yeah, a new age traveller, thank you. That sounds it. No, it's still not right, is it? I bet you, <laughs> I you borrow, borrow, borrow a fan and you go in the fan. <laughs> I know, I know. And caravan on the back. Anyway, yeah, yeah. That'd anyway, be back to chains. I mean, yeah, I mean, the Beatles did a cracking version. Oh, they did. I've never, never got tired of that particular song. And then Ian and the Rebels came up to Lanky Cats, and of course, of late, they're, they're learning new material all the time. I've got hold of their CD, and of course, there it is. And I, it was a particular song I'd picked out for myself from the live version of. Of, uh, of Ian and the Rebels and it, I, I really like it and I hope you too uh, like it as well as I do and that's, well you uh, know my version of Ian my opinion of Ian the Rebels I think they're fantastic I know I really do I know nice I'm, set of guys as well I look, lovely lovely I um, and I'll, I'll just read the names out while we're giving them all the accolades we can think of uh, it's Ian Gregson on lead vocals Keith Hubbard on lead guitar vocals Roy Smith on rhythm guitar and vocals Derek Bruff on bass guitar, Chris Kenny on drums, and sometimes, more often than not, it's Charlie Gallagher on drums, which, of course, Charlie was a, in the original Crying Shames and had a number, I think a number five hit record back in the 60s with the Crying Shames. But anyway, that's the kind of pedigree this particular band has, and they're very, very popular. Uh, I, 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 actually, it brings me into the Ormskirk Civic Hall, which we, um, we did recently for the Rockin' at the YPC, the Young People's Club, and a reunion for teenagers of the 60s, and uh, Lanky Cats had their... Uh, representatives there with the Hart Carney Band, the Smokey Joe Band, Phase Two still standing, and we had a great, a great time. Uh, the place was packed, and just for a little added, like kind of um, uh, specialness about it, if that's the right word, that there'd been a previous um, kind of um, celebration, uh, Lord Mayor included, and the kind of the inner uh, hall. Uh, a very high ceiling as kind of a drapes all the way underneath the ceiling and then down the walls and it was just i suppose re, re, like a marquee you know, of sorts it felt like very a marquee. nice and it was and it was lit beautifully with chandeliers and candles on the tables and in fact it wasn't rock and roll at all if you know what i mean yeah <laughs> it was very posh and yet what happened on that stage was not nothing short of brilliant uh, Shooter opened up the show and uh, a short set, and then Hart Carney went on, did Who the, a little bit. Hart Who's Carney. that in Carney? Well, one half of them sat here, so, and then my friend Jack, and uh, we, we went on and did our little bit. And thanks to Kevin, who dropped in on bass behind us, and he did a great job, Kevin. Just dropped in like that, and we did a, I, I think, a superb little. 30 minutes and so that's enough of that enough of that and then of course there was Ian and the Rebels they played as well and for me Ian and the Rebels they're so warm and oh I don't know what I don't know they're almost inviting you up on the stage to say yeah. you know put your arm around him and say yeah. ah great stuff this is you know and it, it, there's no kind of separation between the audience and this what's on the stage with Ian he, he, he brings himself, enamors himself. Such a me. lovable character, though, yeah, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, looking forward to seeing him again at Blanky Cats pretty soon. OK, well, that's uh, that, that covered. And I, I thoroughly enjoyed myself that particular night. It's a new experience for me to be on such a big stage with the lighting. And it, oh, you should be used and to it. it was a proper show, if you know what I mean. Keith... Hubbard ran the thing, and it was a proper show put together expertly. And the, and he, he came to me at the end and he said, "Oh, the only thing I've ever worried me about doing things like this is getting everybody on and off on time." And he said, "And tonight, everybody was spot on all night, and we finished and started everything perfectly." And so he was a very pleased man. I'm glad, I'm glad to say, yeah. Oh, okay. shame I'd love to have been there. I know, I know, I know. Anyway, I'm going to be strong. This is Shazam.
There's no sense in holding on Cause your pity now Would be too much to bear That, that doesn't half kind of uh, hit you right between the, uh, what is it, the solar plexus, that's it. Yeah. That's where your emotions come from. Is it? That's right, yeah. Yeah, you say it's from the heart, you know, yeah. the heart, but I believe uh, you feel through what you call your solar plexus. Well, mine comes through my eyes when I cry. Oh, <laughs> oh that's lovely. Oh, that's a lovely thing. I know it, it does, it, it evokes so many kind of, um, kind of, um, personal memories I, what was i seen the other day there was something on facebook today it said um uh, you know people post their kind of um uh, sayings yeah. they're all kind of in poster form a lot of them aren't they they come up with their poster and it said uh, whatever uh, line has ever been written in a song um you can always relate to uh, a life experience and now then i mean yeah that's nice, though. Well, the song, you know, the Amber song, The Winner Takes It All, that always gets me. The Winner Takes It All. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, know. I know. So it's absolutely true, that particular line, isn't it? And uh, anyway, more music, this time The Cheaters. And, oh, no, I'm sorry, I've got it wrong. I must apologise, that's all right. I hope it is Wes Paul. Let's go. <laughs>
Hospital Radio, your music, your station, with hits of yesterday and today. Writington Hospital Radio. Hello, Manfred. We've got Manfred here with us. Fantastic. Great to see <laughs> you. So, you're looking so well. Thanks for coming along. Well, uh, finally arri- I arrived here after we've spoken so often uh, yeah. and I wanted to come along so often. But now I'm in Wigan. Yeah. You're in Wigan. It's great. Yeah. Uh, Thanks pie for country. having me here. Pie eaters are here. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. <that's what> <laughs> Thanks very much for, for turning up. Tell us, Manfred, and a lot of people out there, quite a few will have heard of you and quite a few will not have heard of you. Now, yeah. So I have to take you right back and kind of saying, like, well, why have, you know, the question is, I'm sure, why have you invited Manfred Kuhlman on your programme? Yeah. Manfred, all the way from... Bielefeld. Bielefeld, Bielefeld in Germany. In Germany yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he's here in the UK on tour. And we'll tell you a little bit about why he's on tour at the minute. Because I don't believe he's a musician. You're not a musician, I'm are you? I'm not a musician, though. No. Tell us a little bit about your background, then. What are you and what are you doing here? What am I? Well, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of the 60s music. Right. That, I think that's the most important. And uh, since 1967, I'm going out as a DJ... Yeah, I won a DJ competition in '67. Right. Uh, I don't know why I won it. I yeah, was the. Yeah. yeah. I was probably the only you... one who was taking part <laughs> on it. <laughs> I don't believe that. Yeah, uh, and uh, well, I got uh, involved with the Mersey Beat. Yeah. As we can say it. Well, how come you got involved with Mersey Beat when you live in Bielefeld, Bielefeld yeah. in Germany? Well. Uh, we were lucky in so far that we had a branch of a star club down in Bielefeld. A branch of the star club? Yeah. I don't think many people have heard of a branch of the star club. Maybe. Well, it was uh, actually, it's very interesting. Star club, I believe, was the first franchising system yeah. they, they ever set up. So this was the star club, the famous star club, Yeah. on the Reeperbahn in Hamburg, yeah. where the Beatles kind of made the name amongst other clubs that right. they played at. Yeah. And here's a, a branch or a franchise out in Bielefeld. 
Yeah, so uh, I believe the, altogether they had ten further clubs in in, uh, in Germany. Well, that, that is news to me. And the thing is that uh, the owners of these clubs had to to pay for the name. They could use yep. the name Star Club. Yep. Exactly. And another uh, part of the contract was that they also had to to book the bands from the Star Club that are playing the Star Club. That in was Hamburg. the deal. That was the deal. Yeah. 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 So there must have been a big number one, you know, Mr. Big, yep. running the Star Club in Hamburg and the franchises, yeah. and he would say to the bands, you're down in That's Bielefeld, it. you're down in whatever, well, yeah. da, 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 and, and yeah. around. So did you see all the top bands then? Uh, down in not Be all Bielefeld? the top bands. I haven't seen the Beatles. I've never seen the Beatles. Oh. I was too young. Yeah. I simply was too young. Well, I couldn't go to Hamburg, and uh, but... Uh, the first time I managed to sneak around the dorm and at the Bielefeld Star Club yeah. was in 1965 and uh, it was a Liverpool group playing there. It was Earl Royce and the Olympics. Yeah, yeah. And uh, from there, the fever got me, you know. So, What what was this fever, do you think? What was it? Uh, you were a DJ playing these records. Well, not, you, not at that time. No. I was still a fan, you know. There was something new coming up. Uh, compared to, to, to all the other stuff we had before. I mean, we didn't have a, a great deal with the rock and roll in Germany, no, to be honest. No. <clears throat> and uh, so it was just the, yeah, that what we call Schlagersänger, you know, oh. this, this middle of the road thing yeah, yeah. that was going on. And all of a sudden there was uh, a group, four people. Yeah. And uh, loud and rough and wonderful, the drums in in the foreground, great. I mean, there was something real new, and that uh, that hit me right away. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've hit the nail on the head as far as that, because that was my experience as well. And I can, I think, I can say that for thousands of us that that's live music just hits yeah. what we said. We we're just talking before about the solar plexus and how you transmit through the body. That's through it. the solar plexus yeah. and a lot your feelings a lot mm -hmm. you feel what you feel and you felt that band before you actually heard it is a, it. a kind of an old-fashioned yeah. saying isn't it <laughs> you feel that yeah, right. yeah, yeah i know and it's you can't articulate and you can't describe that in words but once you felt once you felt it you can um you know you never forget it and mm -hmm. so that was the moment that you were hooked yeah, is that, that's it is. I mean, when uh, I took the decision to go to the Star Group uh, yep. weeks before, yeah, and until then, I, and how, I old, how old would you be? Uh, Thirteen. 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 Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, very yeah. early, and uh, until I had only seen the local groups, and yep. heard the local groups, and I said, well, uh, I decided for myself, you go into the Star Group now. You have to go there. Yeah, and uh, of course, it had to be. A Liverpool group because this from Liverpool in those days was the mark of quality. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But, well, that, but it's 1965. You know, the Beatles had been topping the charts since 1963 yeah, yeah. Mm. for two years with mm. all their stuff, and then all the other bands came yeah, flooding on yeah. with them. Yeah. The Stones had emerged from the London and the That's scene, right. and, and the, mm. the Who and the Small Faces mm. all yeah. emerged from that scene yeah. as well. So it was a real, real mix that you. Uh, you entered into at that stage uh, yeah. of 13 years old. Yeah. Oh, I'm, wa I'm wow on that. <laughs> yeah, thank yeah. God I did it. So, eh? <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. So that's what that's where you came from. So what you've said, you, you, you got the fever or whatever it was it's called, this feeling of um, something you can't describe. Yeah. So what did you do with it then? What what what, did, what happened from there on in? Well, I just followed the groups. I mean, yeah, I went to, to see the groups. I, I went uh, to the star club then all the time, whenever I could afford it. You know, we were not rich uh, kids in, yeah. in those days. Yeah, and uh, I, I bought records. Yeah, I bought records and uh, found out that many of my records that I had in the end were by Liverpool groups. Yeah, I, I was a big searchers fan yeah. at that time, yeah. and. Uh, well, then, over the years, I mean, okay, you work with it, and uh, when you're going out as a DJ, of course, you're dealing with all the other groups also, but uh, Liverpool had something hit in me, the Mersey Beat, and uh, I tried to uh, to get information beside the Beatles. Yeah. 
you know. When you say you tried to get information, you wanted to know more. I wanted other to know than more. Yeah. What was kind of what records they played? Yeah. You, yeah. So what was that other thing that you wanted to know about? What was it? Well, uh, I wanted to know who was uh, who was in the groups. Yeah. Uh, the, wanted to know about the musicians and and uh, where they right. came from and all this, and uh, I couldn't find any decent stuff about it. Yeah. So I mean, okay, the Beatles. Always yeah, the every, Beatles, the Beatles, the yeah, Beatles, the yeah, Beatles. Yeah. And uh, when you were lucky, you had some information about the searches. Yeah. Jerry and the pacemakers with Jerry Marston, no yeah. problem. But yeah. getting to to the names of the pacemakers was already a bit difficult. Yeah. And, right. Uh, so the fact that one of them, the drummer, was Jerry's brother. Yeah. Yeah. Friendly, and it, yeah. And it wasn't yeah. easy to get all of that information. Uh, yeah. That's, That's cool. it's so very interesting. You can yeah. get. Uh, I mean, the market was flooded with all this information about the top bands and the top people in those bands, yeah. but nothing much below it. That's what you're that's saying, right. isn't it? Yeah, that's right. So, bringing us to modern day, we're going to leap forward a little bit now, mm -hmm. like as in like 40 odd years. <laughs> and because behind you, I can just see them out of sight, just across the studio, you've brought with you two books. Yeah. What are they? What are these books? Well, uh, that's uh, the result of my interest in the music in the end. Uh, I'll take it, they're your books and you started to write them. Yeah? yeah, yeah. And the information in them is this information you could not find anywhere else. That's right. And you went that's on the right. search yeah. for this information. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Let's have a look at the books then. Pull yep. them round. Pull them round here. Let's have a look at the books. What? First of all, there's two books here. This. One of them is called Some Other Guys by Manfred Kuhlmann. And it is volume two. And it's That's... an anthology of some other groups that help create the Mersey sound. Now that's book number volume one. And the yeah. first one that you wrote, this one here is Mersey Beat Waves yeah. by Manfred Kuhlmann. That is, and it had a previous name, didn't it? It had a previous name. Yeah. I mean, the original book yeah. came out as The Sound with the Pound. The Sound with the Pound, yeah. that's the one. And then uh, the publisher I had went bankrupt, Yeah. sadly without paying me. <laughs> and uh, so uh, I, then I got this, this American publisher yeah. interested in it, who by the way, comes from Liverpool. He right. played in a Liverpool group called The Abstracts from Crosby. Right, right. And uh, he found out that you know, my, my first book wasn't available on the market anymore. And he yeah. said, well, uh, I would like to redo it and your second book also. And uh, I said, because in the meantime, I had, you know, the, the problem when, when you're trying to get information, yeah, you get it from everywhere. Uh, but it's hard to get it direct from the musicians. Right. So uh, I've tried this, and uh, some people hesitated to give me the real information, I believe. Uh, but as soon as the first book was out, they all came along with uh, sacks on their shoulder, telling, look at this, that's all the information you're missing. Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> And I said to, to the new publisher then, I said, well, uh, if we want to do it again, I would like to do a revised version of it. And uh, yeah. so that came that Came, came all, about. Uh, yeah, yeah. So the original book was called The Sound with the Pound. Now that's right. a play on words, isn't it? That's a play tell, on tell words. Tell us what that meant, because I think we understand a little bit about that. Well, you that. know, sound is a pound. A sound so is a pound, that's that was, it. That was the idea of Bob Wooler. Bob Wooler. Bob Wooler, That's yeah. That's the famous yeah. DJ from the, famous we from became the Cavern. Very good friends. Excellent. Uh, an, a nice man. Yeah. Full yeah. of knowledge. Wonderful. So yeah. he, he was a great, great help for me. And he came up uh, with, with that title. Yeah. But uh, the American publisher, he's, it's a worldwide publisher. He's working worldwide. Yeah. He said, okay, that's, that's fine then for Lancashire. Uh, yeah part of, of they know this is expression they know what to do with yeah, it yeah. but once you try to sell it in, in Australia or Japan or wherever Germany they don't know what to do with it yeah so and uh, we decided then for this Mersey beat waves and uh, then we had the first 100 copies printed 
And then Bill Harry came up and said, hey, stop. Uh, you can't use that title because I got the rights on Mersey Beat, That's on right. the name yes, Mersey he's Beat. He's got the, the rights to use well, Mersey Beat, and yeah. you've got to get permission from him yes. to use it, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Mersey Beat band, the group with um, the famous Mersey Beats, yeah. have to get permission to use that name right. from Bill. Well, I didn't know I that. Know, I know. But anyway, so uh, then we thought about something else, and uh, I was thinking about Mersey Sound Waves. Ah, yes. And then a certain Bill Hart came and said, well, hey, come on, you can't use it. I've used that before. I've got so it because I used it on a guitar <laughs> exhibition, yeah, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. So in the end, we, we made a, a competition for yep. the right name, yep. and uh, the outcome, the result, the final result, and the final title, final official title. title is Beat M Waves Across the Mersey. Beat Waves Across the Mersey, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Well, that's a good point at, um, at making uh, an introduction to the a little bit of music, uh, oh, great. Uh, Manfred. We've got um, here uh, the Remo 4 CD, Kindly uh, given to us mm -hmm. at Lanky Beat uh, radio show here uh, by Harry Prithich. All right, now, and Harry. you've been with Harry Prithich all afternoon, haven't you? Yeah, I've been. And Harry was in the Remo 4. He was the drummer in the Remo 4, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so I, what I've suggested to Manfred is that he chose several tracks from that CD yeah. to play for us musically in between mm -hmm. the interview spots. So... This is the first one, and it's called Lies. Any particular reason that you've chosen I, this one? I like this song. It's, it's a good beat. It's got yeah. a good beat. I, yeah. I simply like yes, it. I simply yeah. like it. Here we yeah. go. Here the here Remo 4 and Lies. <laughs> That's a nice track. We'll mm -hmm. be playing one or two more a little bit later. But meanwhile, back to Manfred Kuhlman and these books that he's produced. Now then, these books, I'll tell you what now, these books are, I would describe as uh, the, the Bible oh. of northern, if you like, northern, northern rock and roll, but no, Mersey Beat and the northern rock and roll. Because what I've been discovering whilst we've been uh, playing that, track is that the, the whilst Manfred went on uh, to be interested in mainly Mersey beat groups he's still exp no, he's, he's expanded that particular uh, remit haven't you you've, you've gone further afield now yeah. and you've gone now into Lancashire which of course this is the home of Lanky beat that's what we yeah. that's what I've been doing mm -hmm. for the last two or three years to promote Lancashire and Lanc and Lancashire bands 
to the world and you've been doing something very similar and yeah. uh, I've produced a couple of books and, uh, and Manfred's been doing his. Now mine, my books differ greatly to Manfred's books in, in that Manfred goes into immense detail and what I'm going to ask him to do is read some of these stuff from this passage and to bear with him because this is the kind of stuff you can expect to see okay um, that one there if you go from there which, Manfred. which one okay um, it's about Ray Lewis and the Trekkers morphing into Mike Hurst and the Trekkers mm. yeah they're from Preston and then the involvement that went on kind of uh, uh, after uh, what the lineup is, if we can just go go from uh, it um, should be mentioned. Yeah. All right. Okay, it should be mentioned. <clears throat> to avoid any confusion, it should be mentioned that this Mike Hurst was not the same person as the well-known producer of the same name, who had led the group Mike Hurst and the Method. Probably in late 1966 or early 1967. Barry Roberts had also left and was replaced by Dave Hunt. Mike Hurst and the Trekkers kept on touring the National Club Circuit, circuit <laughs> yep. and became very popular in the northwest of England. In 1968, when the good times for touring beat groups were over, Mike Hurst and the Trekkers decided to continue on the cabaret scene as a sort of rock and comedy act and therefore changed the name to The Trekker Show. Dave Hunt left at this time, and his replacement was Bill Hart. Bill oh. Hart? I've heard mm. that name before. His replacement was Bill Hart, who came from the Shims. What is yes, it? my Spe band was the Shims. Pronounced, yeah. yeah. This line only lasted for a little over, only lasted for a little over a year. Yeah. As in 1969, Mike Hurst, who was a Jehovah's Witness, left to concentrate on his religious studies. He did, studies. Yes. Yeah. You want me to continue? Yes, I can. Yeah, okay, I can. Go, um, go to I the can. next bit. <laughs> right. Yeah. At the same time, Bill Hart moved down to London and was replaced by the returning Barry Roberts. This trio successfully continued to play the social clubs until the early 80s, at which time the Trekker Show called it a day. Yep. And continue there. Yeah. Paul Nickel became a compare at the Preston Club at a Preston club, and in 1984, Barry Roberts joined the old peculiar band, as did Dave Hall, who followed him to, his, to this group in the early 90s. It is known that Mike Hurst later returned to the music scene, music scene as one half of the Mike Hurst duo, at one time also was also backed by drummer Bill Hart again. Yeah. After that... Yes. Mike Hurst and so and, on. Yeah, and Mike yeah. sadly died not yeah, that yeah. long ago, mm -hmm. and uh, all commiserations to his um, to his wife Linda. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, yeah. That that gives you some idea of the depth that Manfred has gone into. How would you know that one of the guys out the band, Paul Nickel, for instance, uh, R.I.P. God bless, um, became a compere at a Preston. Social club. I mean, and in 1984, <laughs> Barry joined this, and Dave Hall did that, and mm. my coast was not to be confused. There's a lot of depth in here that you'll not find anywhere else, and that's why I call it the Bible of, uh, of yeah. rock and roll in the north of England. I, I think that's quite mm. an easy title mm. to run off um, off the tongue. Now then, to qualify to get into your book. Uh, or your books, I should I say, mm -hmm. to qualify. What um, what was the qualification to get in your books? Because well, uh, I know I've got the Shims. Now, the Shims yeah. never made a record. Yeah. Is that the reason why you've kind of not included something like the Shims? Uh, that's them? why the Shims have, haven't have got an extra story. Yeah. An individual's, individual story. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, uh, this group scene was so big. It was. Uh, writing about every group especially with, with all that detailed information, yep. is impossible. There's, one life is not enough to Absolutely. do it. So uh, in the end, I decided, okay, uh, they, the groups that got a, get a story must have done a recording. Yeah. Yep. And it was, uh, uh, the, the thought in the, in the back was simply uh, in the days, in the age of CDs yep. that we are now in, so you have uh, all these bonus tracks and all this. Yeah. Yep. So, and... Uh, 
it might be that just that recording of yep. such and such group will be on on so on a CD as a bonus track, yep. and nobody knows anything about the group. Absolutely. So I said, okay, uh, every group that made a recording, which should have been should have been uh, something like an acetate, yep. at least or a reel to reel that it's still existing. Yeah. Which in uh, such a case was the cheaters from Witness, because yeah, they had yeah. an old acetate that yeah. put down and got it onto a CD. Yeah, and right. uh, we played it earlier on in the show, uh, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and what a good uh, recording it was, although the lower levels of recording mm. it was used, because it is that old, uh, Diane had to tweak it up a little bit, I noticed, on the right. to, huh? to bring it up to kind of modern day levels. Mm. There was no problem on the sound or anything, it was a lovely, lovely recording of that. Um, just to say that that's the one group, the Cheetahs. Yeah. What other groups then, from say the Lancashire side, uh, you know, the Lanky Beat side of things? What other groups are in your books? Well, you want to exclude the Liverpool groups. Not or, exclude. Or, or, although it They've was all, Lancashire in the sixties. Right? <laughs> they all had the glory. Yeah. They all had the glory. Yeah, right. Yeah, I mean, uh, and that's mm. not to say they mm. can't still have the glory. No, no. It's just that I felt with Lanky Beat that we, we needed to put ourselves on the map. As yeah. well as Liverpool, not yeah, to replace right, Liverpool. Yeah. Not I agree with you. And um, so, and you've gone some way towards doing well, yeah. that as well, haven't you? Because you've got the teachers from Witness. Is any, anything else? Uh, well, just Witness. Uh, uh, it is um, the Cheetahs from Witness are in there. Uh, it's uh, the Boys. dominant four. Dominant four. The dominant four. Where are they the, from? Uh, from Witness. Are they? Uh, right. Yeah, they are. <laughs> the addicts. The addicts from, from Witness. Witness. Jeff Stacy and the Wanderer from right. Witness. So there's uh, Sonny K and the Rats from yeah. uh, Runcorn. Yeah. Uh, then uh, go to, to, to Wigan, it's the Beat Boys, yeah. the Rats, the Sportsmen. Yeah. And uh, then yeah, from St. Saint, from, from Saint Helens is yeah. uh, Ray Merkel and the Sunsets. Fantastic. And the Classics. Yeah. And some more, yeah. some more. <laughs> Preston, and, of course. Yeah. Ray, Ray Lewis and the Trekkers, Mike yeah. Hurst and the Trekkers. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the Thunderbeats. Thunderbeats, uh, yes. The first group of Keith, Keith Hartley, as you yeah. will know, as the drummer, especially. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, we have the Prestons in there. We have David John and the Mood in there from yeah. Preston. Yeah. Uh, I'm having the Warriors from Accrington. Yeah. Are included. Yeah. And then uh, the Southport groups, Rhythm and Blues Incorporated, yeah. Diplomats. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, we Lancashire is well represented in these particular books, aren't they? I'd say yes. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. would say yes yeah. as well. <laughs> and where you kind of were, I, I mean, there is a crossover between our books, uh, mm? but I've not gone into any detail like mm? you have in terms of the, the biblical nature of your, yeah. you know, the depth that you've gone to. I approach my books in a completely different way in the mm? set. I tried to kind of um, put um, the 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 uh, submission of any particular band, whoever mm. submitted it, mm. all, always made a few comments about it, and mm. that's what I did—a picture yeah. and a few comments about the band yeah. and a little bit of history about the band, but no kind of in-depth of anything in my book. Well, but as well, long as they're recorded as being there, yeah. having been there yeah. and done it a yeah. little bit, right. and most of the bands that I've got down, apart from the ones you've just named, of course. Mm didn't make a recording either. Mm, yeah. So that's where my book kind of well, takes over from yours. In, in that we're recording, between us, yeah. we're recording virtually mm. virtually every band, haven't we? Well, and yeah. we hope to. <laughs> in the north of England, well, of course. I've tried my best, at I least. Know. I mean, so um, it is, uh, as I said, it's just a recording, yep. recording groups yep. that got their own stories. But, of course, uh, uh, as... Uh, Far as I could find out, I've I had uh, all the other groups with the lineup in there, and uh, so then I have a list of about three hundred or oh, yeah. five hundred yeah. groups uh, that were around at that time and uh, where I didn't get any information, not the lineup yeah. or anything. So uh, yeah, the thing for me simply, Bill, was uh, I was fully aware of the fact after doing this. There is uh, nobody uh, going on that again, going all over this ground again. And I yeah. know why now after I've done it. Hey, yeah. I tell you. <laughs> uh, I thought, well, once you do it, then do it as accurate as possible. Yeah. Because what you have got in there in details will get lost. Absolutely. Someday. Absolutely. Yeah. 
and doing what you're doing. And when we met, I remember in Southport, I'd just been to um, one of the little music shops in Southport, hadn't I? Barry and, uh, Wormsley. To Barry Wormsley, <laughs> who'd been in Rhythm and Blues yeah. Incorporated. Yeah. And I got to know Barry quite well. And as mm. I'm nipping in now and again, when uh, I, I just break off from shopping, I let my, mm. my, I let my wife go around down Lord Street. <laughs> and I thought, I'll, just be, I'll, I'll not be a minute, Lord. Mm. I'll just nip mm. in round to Barry, see what he's got in. <laughs> You know, yeah. one of us have a little chat. <laughs> and goodness me, if uh, we're not crossing across the threshold of the door, yeah. you're coming out and mm. I'm going in. Yeah. Uh, and this is, and then Barry spots me, spots Barry, and dragged me back. He said, mm. "Come and meet Manfred." And that mm. was it. We met. And, yeah. uh, and when I found out what you were doing and what I intended to do, because mm. I hadn't started then, all right, then, yeah, <laughs> with mine, and uh, you know what we've done between us, it's been quite remarkable. Yeah. That's a good point to break again. We're going to go back to the Remo 4 on the yeah. second track that you've chosen. Now, this is called Wild Side of Life. Do any, does it need yeah. any explanation? Uh, not really. <laughs> <laughs> It. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Yep. It's one of those classics that yeah. will never, never go away and yeah. uh, will always be yeah. popular. Do you know what it's all about? That the, the, the wild side of life. Uh, do you know what that? Well, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Go on, tell me what it means. To you. Oh, come on! Uh, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so how deep should, should, they, should we go there? <laughs> what do they do in Germany that yeah. they don't do here yeah. in, uh, in the UK? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but I believe uh, they have the, stronger beer. I know they have they stronger beer. Apple yeah. yeah, yeah, apple corn, yeah. yeah. Some people do, I've heard it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Yeah. But I love the German beer, that's right. Yes, mm. and German beer, fine, mm. fine beer, German yeah. beer, yes. Mm. Good taste and... Uh, and yeah, they, they, fresh. I don't know, I, they make it very strong. We've not, we've not been used to that strength of beer in this country until like around about the last 10 years, uh, uh. maybe 20 years, perhaps. Yeah. Uh, that we started again in the stronger beers mm. and um, and of course bottled beers have become very popular yeah. whereas it used to be draft beer used mm. to all be all the radio mm. mm. nobody drank bottles of beer mm. when mm. I was certainly when I was a kid but now it's a trend now to hold a bottle and swig from a bottle yeah. and things like that and, that, I mean, and has been for the last 20 years yeah. yeah but we in Germany we still prefer the f fresh draft beer yeah, uh, yeah still, mean, you know yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you still do the liters and you know? Is it uh, half well, liters no, that's that's Bavaria. That's oh, it's al Bavaria. that's almost Germany. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, no, yes, so I understand what I you're have, saying. Um, the, 
I prefer the, the small glasses, really. Yeah. You know, this, this 0 uh, 0.2, because uh, I like to, to have, I like it better to have two of them than one uh, yeah. 0 0.4. Yeah. Because it's always fresh and always nice yeah. tasting again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sounds right. great. Yeah. We, in the 60s, had a place called the Beer Keller opened up yeah. on King Street. Mm. And they were selling this German beer. And it was like, uh, well, first of all, it was very, very pale looking. Mm. And I'm just trying to think of the name of what the beer was called. But it was something Haller. Uh, and uh, people out there will be jumping up and down, telling me and shouting at me and saying, it was called, yeah. I can't remember, <laughs> Grunhalle or Grunenhalle or a Grunenhalle. Oh. Was it? Well, that's Greenall's really. And mm. he just, uh, mm. Greenall's Brewery just kind of mm. came out with a version called it Grunhalle, which of course mm. is Greenall's. Uh, I mean, if you didn't know, but anyway, most know. probably it wasn't a German yeah, beer. I know, it was it just was given, German. was just given a, just, a German name. Because it was trendy. It was trendy. Yeah, and yeah. it's so, Marketing mm. is everything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they even put Guinness in, in glasses that look like um, uh, half, half a Guinness in a, in, a, in a glass, a wine glass, with a, a white, the white top on it, because they wanted to market the Guinness to women. Now, then, that's not being sexist. That is what, how they sold Guinness to women, and it, it looked so elegant and delicate and, of course, beautiful because the black and the white top on it, you know. And that's uh, Guinness and the innovative marketing. But uh, that's, beside mm. the point. that's beside the point. I do digress. I'm yeah. sorry about that. But there you go. Because what we've got to get on to now, back to Manfred and his doings. Now, his doings, he's not content. He's not. He moves so quickly. He never stands still. He's producing. He's produced his books. Now then, tell us what you decided to do after that, when you produce your books, your monster project, and it was a monster. <laughs> it was a monster, yeah. No doubt right. about that. Yeah. Then he went and did some more. Tell us what yeah. you did. Well, uh, I have to say um, that's not, the merits are not up to me. They are up to, to my publisher, Dave yes. McDoor. Yeah. Uh, as he has had a friend, or has a friend, sorry, yeah. uh, from the, who played in The Notions in the 60s. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry now. <clears throat> Sorry, and uh, so he had six unreleased tracks of the notions, and uh, Dave came up with the idea if it wouldn't be nice to to have a CD going with the books. Yeah, and I thought, well, that, that's a great idea. Yeah, and uh, I, I've collected lots of uh, the the acetates over the years, and I had already lots of them in my collection and through the direct uh, contact through the musicians that I had now yeah so I contact the, the, the people and, and asked so what what do you think would you give me a song that I could put on the CD and uh, well we wanted to do one CD originally and uh, out came three in the meantime four and a fifth CD yeah. will follow but then I'll stop it. Fantastic. You know. <laughs> so the CDs, now explain to me what the CDs actually do. Now you said, you're showing me the copies here. Yeah. And it's, um, you mentioned before about the, the title. Let's say the first CD, and it says on the front there, some of, some of the uh, Mersey Beat Waves, Volume mm. 4. Because there's That's two. Now it says 20 tracks yeah. featuring... The Rain Checks, Dennis Satan and the Sabres, The New Towns, The Tabs, The Kinsleys, Group One, Johnny Ringo and the Colts, plus 14 others. Yeah. And then it lists them and track-wise. Mm -hmm. So what does the first one say there? The first one uh, is uh, Slow Down by the Mersey Five from 1964. Yeah. And it says simply because these CDs are going with the, with the book, it says, for group info, see Beat Waves Cross the Mersey, page 304. Fantastic. Yeah. So if you play the track and you've got the book in your yeah. hands, you can listen to the band and read all about them. That's it. At the that's same time. what we want. What a lovely, lovely idea. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, I mean, let's face it. Uh, with this, once you had these, these vinyl things, you yeah. know, the big albums, yeah. you, you had space on there to write something, to, no. to give information. No. But with the CDs... There's yeah. no chance, especially when you have 20 different groups that. Uh, to handle there. So, and I thought this this is really the yeah. the best. And these tracks that you've got on the CD are 
Well, the rare, aren't they? The very exceedingly rare. Abs They're not absolutely, yes. Yeah. Something so, you're going uh, to buy in a shop, can't no, they? No, no, no. Uh, they come mainly from uh, from uh, acetates that were made by the groups. Uh, yeah. Let's say at uh, Philips in in Kensington yeah, yeah. or right. Unicode Studios in Moorfields or yeah. whatever. And they. And you, you know. asked for them, or did they give them to you? Did you uh, willingly well, give I've, them to I've collected, I found collected quite them? quite a few over the years. Yeah. And uh, the others, uh, I've contacted the musicians. Yeah, and they send, they put it on on an, uh, on a CD for me, of course. Uh, right. And then and you I always took it then to the studio in Bielefeld. Yeah. And uh, we worked on it, uh, cleaned yeah. it up. Uh, I mean, you. There's not really much that you can do, as you probably know. It's all a one-track thing. Yeah. So yeah. if uh, the drums are too far in the background, they will stay too far in the background. Yeah. There's nothing you can change. No. You can change, you can alter the sound, you can put bass in or, or travel yeah. out or but whatever. It's, but it's basically you, embedded, isn't it? Yes, you can um, compress it in the like middle that, yeah. tones. Right. But... Uh, yeah. So, so you've got yeah. what in effect is the original recording, that's but all. enhanced for, for pleasant listening. Is that, that's what you're saying, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's no Dolby surround sound, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's a document. These are documentation CDs, yeah. and these are meant to yeah. be documentation yeah. CDs. It's history. So, that's it. I, okay, how do we get hold of now your books and your CDs? How do we, how do we get hold of them? Well, uh, the in books... You can order in every bookshop normally. Yep. They got, uh, got their, their ISBN number when you have the title or the ISBN number. Right. So you can go to your local bookshop and order it. Yeah, right. Should be possible. And they will with, order without. it and they'll get it from your the yeah. publisher eventually. That's like kind of going to your bookshop. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the CDs? And the CDs, yeah, that is... Um, Same way? Uh, no. The CDs, every volume is uh, limited to 300 right uh, cds and uh, so the the only places you can get it really is in the united states from my publisher from wellows press right in wigan from harry prithick <laughs> ah, right so <laughs> and, harry's uh, yeah a, an harry, agent, harry, like. harry yeah so he's doing it for me yeah and uh, in germany from from myself yes, directly of course. and I mean, I've, I've left a few copies uh, in the Beatles shop in uh, Matthew Street in Liverpool. Excellent, this time. excellent. But uh, they are not going into the shops. Right, so what are, how do we get in touch with you then, or Harry, uh, to, 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 to order our, um, our Mersey uh, waves, beat, beat waves across the Mersey yeah, CDs? Yeah, so uh, that's... How do that's we, how, have you got a, um, a kind of um, uh, a website that we can no, look I'm, on? I'm no, I'm not website? having... No, I'm Have not you got an email address? I've got an email address. Would you yeah. like to give us your email address? Of then? course. Well, that's uh, it's all English. Yeah. Eh? <laughs> What's surprising? <laughs> uh, and it's all in small capitals, do yes, you say it? Yes, yeah, that's it, yeah. That's, uh, it starts now. The, T-A-G, yeah. dot, V-I, dash, king... K I N G at Arcor, that's A R C O R dot D E. That D E is yeah. German, isn't it, on yeah. the internet? And also, if you like, you could always get in touch with me at Lanky Beat, that's Bill at Lanky, that's LankyBeat.com. Don't forget the K in there. And I can always act as uh, a go between. Between yourself and yeah. um, and we'll get these CDs to you if you if you fancy it and of course we'll point you in the right direction for the books as well. Mm. I've had a fascinating time, Diane. What do you think? Tell us what you I think. I think it's amazing. I really do. Fantastic. <laughs> See, I from that you can go to um, to the book, so you can look at the book, tell you all about the band that's playing. Yeah. I think it's amazing. And of course, these bands. I, I, I read out a few of the bands there. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it's. These are classic history bands. Yeah. This is a history yeah. lesson, yeah. folks. Yeah. This, this is a history gigging, lesson. Gigging the information. There's been a lot of and digging going on. Absolutely. It's freely available. Yeah. And, and if Manfred hadn't been doing this, it wouldn't have got done. No. And I was inspired by what Manfred was doing, and I did my bit. And if we hadn't have done what we're doing, I don't know what there would be. There would be very yeah. little. Yeah. And, of course, we have got friends around the world that uh, are doing other things as well. Mm -hmm. And... Um, and uh, I hope that one day I'll be able to introduce um, a guy whose name I can't remember just off the top of my head, but yeah. he's from Canada. 
and oh. if I remember rightly, his name is Bruce Welsh. Not, Bruce Welsh, yeah, not yeah, to be no, confused no, yeah, was, with from the, the shadows, Bruce yeah. Welsh from the Shadows. Yeah. This guy, I met him in Liverpool at mm. the Adelphi Hotel, and he was flogging his books, and he is doing yeah. something similar, but oh. mainly UK nationwide. Here's ah. a Canadian doing this. Yeah. Here's a German guy doing this. Nobody else is doing it um, except for and me. the Lancashire guy, <laughs> guy doing it. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's fantastic. I yeah. mean, we're all pulling together, and like I say, musical history. We're, it'll never die now. We've no, got it. No, it and it this particular may, program it, is the same. This, it, this particular yeah. program is there forever. Mm. It's nice to know that that uh, uh, as long as you keep tuning into Lankybeat dot com and uh, switching on that little button. Uh, where it says Wrightington Hospital Radio. And uh, that brings me to the point of thanking Diane uh, for a, a, an excellent show it, again. As always. Yeah, thank you very much. We've always enjoyed your producing here at uh, WHR. And um, it just remains for me to say, Manfred, thank you very, very much for gracing Lanky Beat, the Lanky Beat show. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you. It was my pleasure, really. And nice to work with you, Diane. Yeah. Thanks, and we'll Bill. see you down at Lanky Cats on Thursday. On Thursday, yeah, sure. That's where you're going to be. Yeah. Are you going to be bringing your books? I'm bringing the books. And I'm the bringing CDs. The CDs, yeah. Can, and they, can we buy them? Can we yeah, buy them? Yeah, sure, yeah. Oh, there right. you go. It's easy as pie. All right. Right, let's go with the play out then. This is the final track, the Remo 4, and this is Peter Gunn. Wow. Mm. 